Susie studied Samantha's profile while they waited for their mom to come in the room. Samantha had a little bump her nose about halfway from the rounded tip. Susie liked that bump. Susie didn't have a bump. and She thought bumps made noise, noses interesting. She also liked the little checkmark shaped scarf under Samantha's right eye. Susie did have a scar, but hers was hidden under the hair at the top of her forehead. Susie got her scar because she was doing something she wasn't supposed to do. Samantha got her seat, her scar, because Susie was doing something she wasn't supposed to do. Susie loved to climb on things when she was little. One of her favorite things to do was to get up the porch tail and try to walk all the way around the house on it. She was good at balancing on the rail, but climbing around the poles that held it up could have been hard because her arms were too short to wrap around them. She fell a lot, usually landing on her mom's flower beds and getting into troubles. Their mom was super serious about her flowers. One day, while Susie was brushing off the dirt from her latest fall, Susie said, There's a better way to get around the post. Who says? I said, How do you know? I just do, and I know how to do it, too. Okay, then show me, Susie said. No, Mom said not to get up there. Well, then why did you say that? Because there's a better way. But if you're not going to show it to me, who cares if there's a better way? You're just being a know-it-all. Am not. Are too. The girls face off next to the yellow begonis at the side of the house. Hands on hip, they glare at each other, practically nose to nose. Even though Susie was a year older, she wasn't any taller than her sister. I think you're lying about the better way, Susie said. I am not lying. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. By now, they were yelling. What are you girls fighting about? Their mom called. She was inside the house doing laundry, and Susie wanted her to stay there so they could p keep playing. She leaned forward Samantha until they touched nose, and she whispered, Yes, you are. Samantha made her prinkly face and said, Fine. Then she marched around Susie and climbed up onto the railing next to one of the posts. Samantha's ma Susie's mouth dropped open. Samantha put her back on the post. See, you have to go around the facing out, not facing in. That way, the weight of the... The weight of your butt doesn't pull off the railings. Samantha stared, started to demonstrate, but her foot slipped. She lost her grip and fell forward off the railing and into the flower bed. Susie had fallen there before and just got dirty, but somehow, somehow Samantha's face struck the top of the one of the stakes holding the, her mom's chemist. Samantha was mad at Susie for days after that, not only because she had to have stitches but she just got in as much as trouble as being on the rail. It was her idea, Samantha had yelled, pointing at Susie. You know better than that, their mother said to Samantha. You don't do anything you don't want to do. She was right about that. Like, now. Not that story, Samantha was saying to their mother. I want you to read the one about the happy ghost. Susie smiled. This was, had become Samantha's favorite story lately. Susie's mom looked like she was about to argue, but she sighed and picked up the top book from the neat pile of Samantha's nightstand. Susie's mom sat on the edge of the bed. Susie wished she could do something about her mom. She looked so pale. No, more than pale. She looked like her skin was turning invisible. Susie could see her mom's veins crawling over her forehead and set her hands and arms. They looked like blue worms. The first time Susie had seen veins like that on an old lady. She thought they were worms and she screamed. Her mom had explained what the blue Jagged lines were, and the tall old house on the top of the old mountain. The tall old ghost floated around the maid hall, Susie Moms began reading. Susie plumped the pillow under her head and scooted over closer to Samantha. Samantha's breath caught, and she turned into a, a Samantha log, as if the evil witch had suddenly frozen her. Susie sniffed and backed away. Why was Samantha so mad at her? The tall old ghost in the tall old house wasn't a pretty ghost, Susie Mom read, but he was a happy ghost. He was very, very happy ghost. Susie noticed her mom's eyes were shiny and wet. Susie also noticed her mom's voice sounding choking crackly. Keep going, Samantha said. Their mom sighed again. Susie's mom returned to the familiar story about the ghost who was happy because he got to spend forever with his family. Until he found out he wouldn't spend forever with them, since they were moving. That part always made Susie as sad as it made the ghost in the story. She couldn't imagine moving out of this house. Who would have taken care of Oliver? 
Susie's mom read quickly until she got to the part where the ghost found out that if he went away from the house to a special place of sparkly light where the truly happy ghosts hang out, the ghost could never ever be separated from his family no matter where they went. She slowed down over that part and she cleared her throat a lot. Susie thought it would be very nice to be in a place where you can never ever be separated from your family. She loved being with her mom and Samantha. Samantha could be in pain, but she was Susie's sister. When the story was done, Susie's mom stood, hesitant, and went to the door. Sleep, sleep sweet, she said. Susie wished her mom would kiss and hug them good night like she used to, but Samantha had decided they were too old for that, and she wouldn't let her mom do that anymore. Apparently, her mom thought Susie agreed with Samantha, but she didn't. As soon as her mom turned off the lights, Samantha curled onto her side. Good night, Samantha, Susie said but her sisters didn't respond. Susie shrugged and curled into a ball facing the window. She looked at the skinny, curved piece of moon that peeked into the room. Its light wasn't bright enough to see by, but it was bright enough to make a lot of funny shadows. Two of the shadows looked like dancing hippopotamus, and three of them combined to look like a clown riding a horse. One of them looked a little like... Susie closed her eyes. She listened to Samantha's breath. And she wondered if her sister hadn't understood the drawings. Samantha's hadn't said anything before she stuffed them under the covers. Why didn't she even put them there? Outside, a dull thud out sat on the porch. Already? Susie didn't want to leave yet. She was hoping Samantha would take another look at the drawings. She just had to figure them out. The dud was followed by a faint squeak. The sound of a porch swing moving. Then the thud turned into a footstep pattern. Susie was so used to. Thump. Tap. Thump. Tap. Why did that sound make her skin crawl? Why did she feel like she could, she would know what was out there? Why did she feel like she had to know? Susie pushed back the covers and got out of bed as if something was pulling her from its safety. It was like one of those tractor beams she'd seen in the space movies her dad liked to watch. She had no control. She wanted to stay in her nice warm bed, but instead she walked out the room and downstairs. At the bottom of the stairs, she listened to the footsteps. She watched the large shadow pass the dining room window. Once it passed, she trotted into the kitchen and opened the back door. She waited. Sometimes Samantha would come and back the, slam the back door. And they go back to bed, but not tonight. Tonight, Susie can only stand there, listening to the footsteps come closer and closer. As the last minute. The last minute. Just before the steps came around the corner, she closed the kitchen door. She tried to go back upstairs, but she couldn't. Instead, her feet took her to the entryway. The house was a really big entryway, a formal entry way, her mom called it. She told Susie that in the old days, they used to have a round table in the middle of the entryway. The table always had a vast full of flowers from the garden. But Susie's mom had to put the table away when Susie's first walking had turned into a wild running. Because Susie keep bumping into the table and knocking over the vase, she broke seven vats before I give up, Susie's mom liked to tell people. She never said it like she was mad, she seemed to make her happy for some reason. Now the big entryway held only a maroon and navy blue braided rug. Susie went to the middle of the rug and waited. When the shadows shifted outside and the shadow sink in the house approached the front door, Susie stepped forward and opened it. As Susie knew she would be, Chica stood stall and stiff outside the front door. The porch light played with Chica's yellow body, making it look like the animatronic was breathing. Susie looked up at Chica's pinkish, purplish eyes. Did Chica's black eyebrows jump smooth? Susie looked down quickly. Chica's orange feet were planted on the welcome pad, one foot over the W and one foot over the M. As always, Susie hesitated, but then she did as she knew what she must. She held out her hand and let Chica enclose her stiff, cold fingers over her own. Chica turned and walked towards the steps, leaning down the leaf covered front yawn. Susie had no choice but to go along. Now the small taps of her footsteps joined with Chica's, and leaves crunkled under their feet as they left Susie's house behind them. In hushed stillness, Samantha listened to be sure her mother was in her room. She had to listen hard because the thick walls blocked little sounds. Eventually, though, she heard a creak she recognized her mother's bed. She waited a few more minutes before turning on the flashlight under her covers and reached for the drawings. Samantha didn't, almost didn't need to see them. 
They'd been in her mind since the moment they appeared. In that time, she let herself admit that she knew the first picture was her and her suit and Susie. But what did it mean? Tenting her shent, her sheet and blanket, she aimed her flashlight at the drawings of the little girl. At first, Samantha thought the flying hair girl, Susie, held a mirror, but she quickly realized it was a manifestation glass. It looked like the one her dad used to have his desk draw drawer in the office, the one he sometimes let the girls use to look at things up close. Samantha had never forgotten seeing Oliver's wood bark up close. It was like seeing a whole other world. Susie could name things all she wanted, but Samantha would rather study them. That's what like, she used to magnify the magnifying glass for close-up studies. Susie, though, used it to hunt. After Susie used the glass to look at the caterpillars up close, she decided to use it to find teeny tiny insects in the lawn. She was sure she was going to find something no one would ever seen before. When Samantha used the glass to look at Oliver's bark, Susie grabbed an enamel at the different part of his trunk. Maybe we'll find some elves, she said. Okay, so if Susie was holding the magnifying glass, she was looking for something. But what? The floating baby? Oh, no, not the baby. The floating thing was a doll. Samantha frowned. If Susie was looking for a doll, there was only one doll missing. It had to be granted, so Susie wanted her back. But what about the chick? What was that? Samantha didn't understand the two-feet chick. But what did the other drawings mean? Samantha aimed her flashlight at the second drawing. It was just as she remembered. Three panels of a flying hair girl walking away from the door of the first two. Just the door and the third and the moons were a little bigger in each panel. What does that mean? What if the moons were getting bigger meant that each panel was a different day? Like tonight, tomorrow night, and the next night. Samantha thought about her sister, the doll, the moons. She got it. Turning out the flashlight, she thought, Susie only going to be here for two more nights. She was pretty sure she had it right, but the chick, what's the chick there for, she whispered. Susie, of course, didn't answer because she was gone. Samantha's alarm woke up, woke her up before the sun came up. Thankfully, she was a light sleeper, so it didn't take much volume to make for her to hear it. She was sure she wouldn't disturb her mom. Her mom had trouble going to sleep, but once she's asleep, she just has much trouble waking up. Samantha had overheard her mom telling Jenny that they only sleep when the help of pills. The pills seemed to make morning really hard, and Samantha had learned not to talk to her mom before school. Once Samantha had forgotten once Samantha had forgotten part of the school project, she and her mom were rushing around already because her mom had overslept. They finally ran out the house into the car and her mom had driven only as fast as the bottom of the driveway. When Samantha realized what she left behind the room, I have to go back, she said. Her mom hit the brake so hard Samantha's head shot forward and back. She figured her mom would quickly drive back to the house. Instead, her mom bent over and pounded her head several times in the steering wheel. She whispered something over and over while she did it. Samantha thought it sounded like, I can't do this. Now Samantha lay in the dark, holding her alarm clock for several minutes. She didn't like getting up early. Susie had been the one who always wanted to hop out of bed and start playing before the sun was up. Susie was like their dad, who said the best part of the morning was just before dawn, where everything was a state of possibility. Smell that air, he said to Samantha in a few mornings. He was able to talk to her to get up early. Look at the pink light. It's so pretty, Susie would squeal. Not pretty enough to get early for, Samantha thought. This morning, though, it wasn't the smell or the color that got Samantha out of bed. It's what she needed to do. She only had two more days to find Gretchen. She didn't know what would happen if she hadn't find Gretchen. She didn't understand why a missing doll could mean so much for her dead sister. Susie was a ghost, wasn't she? Why would a ghost want something like a doll? But it didn't matter. Susie wanted, and after what had happened to her, she deserved to get what she wanted. Samantha threw back the covers. Cold air hit her bare legs, and goosebumps prinkled her skin. She ignored her desires to die back in bed. Instead, she stood, laying the thick, soft material of her blue fended nightgown block some of the cold air. She stuffed her feet into the leather mescan slippers Jenny had gotten for her. Samantha didn't like fuzzy animal slippers like Susie did grabbed her clothes, and she laid out during the night. She trod to the bathroom on tiptoe. Thankfully for the little space heaters that sat on the stirring footstool on the bathroom floor, Samantha turned it on and stood in front of it for a couple minutes to warm up. 
Then she did the short version of her morning routine before getting dressed. After she realized what Susie's drawing meant, Samantha had tried to stay awake long enough for her mom's pills to work so she could start looking for Gratchet. But she kept hearing her mom's bed creak, which meant her mom was not deeply asleep. Samantha's eyes had started to close, so she set her alarm for the morning. When she finished the bathroom, Samantha turned off the heater and opened the door. Stepping into the, ball the hallway, she stood on the dark green Brennan runner and thought about where Susie might have hidden Gretchen. Samantha glanced at Susie's closed door. She shook her head. The doll wouldn't be in there. When Samantha and Susie had thought about Gretchen, Susie was so upset that she would possibly get. She wouldn't have put her doll in her room, where Samantha could easily find it. Even if it was in there, there was going to be the last place Samantha looked. She hadn't been in Susie's room since the horrible night when... Samantha went down the hall, towards the stairs. If she was going to look for the doll, she would do it in a organized way. It made sense to start at the bottom of the house and work up. Besides, on the fourth floor, there was less chance she would be wake up her mom. The porch light's pale yellow glow stretched up the stairs through the lead glass window in the front door. The light was modern and eerie. How can glass be lead? Susie had asked when their dad told them when the glass door was called. Samantha smiled now that she walked down the stairs. Susie was always asking questions like that. Samantha was never really sure if Susie was being funny or dumb. At the bottom of the stairs, Samantha looked both ways. She could either go into the dining room or the living room. Besides the kitchen, the only ro other rooms on the first floor were the small bathroom and her dad's office. She thought the doll would be in either of those rooms because there weren't any hiding places in there. She started the dining room. The dining room was... At least double the size of any dining room Samantha had ever seen on TV. She wouldn't really compare it to the other dining rooms because she hadn't seen others. She didn't have any friends. When Susie was alive, Samantha was sometimes invited in parties that Susie went to. But she stopped going after attending a couple. They were stupid and boring. And the kids were always mean to her. Samantha wiped her forehead to brush away her memories. She turned the wall switch so the lights flicker over the table and would... Come on low. The light was a big metal wheel with fake candles along its rim. Jenna said the light fixture was farmhouse style, which made sense. Why is it called a fixture? Susie asked when they were little. It didn't fix anything. Samantha crossed to the tall carved hunch that sat behind one side of the long, dark dining table. She opened the lower doors. The hunch was full of china and crystal dishes and glasses their family never used. She peered behind the stacks of plates and bowls. No granted. Moving into the long way cabinet at the back of the room, the side doors, Jenny called it. Samantha opened all the compartments and found lots of silver platters and vases. No granted. She went into the front of the room and opened the lid of the window seat. It was filled with tablecloths and napkins. Just to be sure, she dug under and between the stacks. No doll. She went into the living room next. Outside the streets, she sat in a roar in a garage truck, emptying trunk, trash cans in front of all the house. She chewed her lower lip. Would the garbage truck wake her up her mom? She better hurry. The living room was big and filled with comfy I mean, furniture. It was too bad they hardly used it. Samantha looked longingly at the long pallid sofa that faced the stone fire place at one of the room. Two solid burglary love seats joined the, the sofa to make a U shape. Filled in the corners with a chunky oak and end tables and center around the square green oakmen. This was the place where their family used to play video games and by the fire. At the other end of the living room was another big sofa and a couple of recliner chairs faced a flat screen TV. Sometimes her mom would let Samantha watch that TV. But most of the time, she was supposed to watch shows on a computer in her room. Around the edges of the room, built-in silk shelves and compartments were stiff with books and pictures of frames. Samantha remembered Susie's feelings about those shelves and some of the other furniture. Oak? Susie said one day when she was thinking about seven, Oak, like Oliver. Furniture is made from wood, their dad said, and wood come from trees. So they killed trees to make furniture? Susie squealed. Their parents had spent most of an hour trying to convince her the trees didn't feel pain when they were cutting down. They never succeed. Susie was sure the tree, the trees hurt. Samantha started searching all the cabinets, beginning at the front corner and working clockwise around. 
When she didn't find anything, she left. Behind, she felt behind all the books of the shelves, but she could only reach the bottom three rows. She tried into the kitchen pantry and get into the step ladder that was kept in there. Defying her ordinary plan, she searched the pantry while she was there. She found evidence that someone other than her had been hiding sweets. An old hardened bag of marshmallows, two and a half eaten packets of chocolate chip cookies, an unopened box of old-fashioned donuts with a salad by date that was a year ago. A metal container of harsh butterscotch candies and that were all stuck together. But she didn't find Gratchet. Dragging the step ladder back into the living room, she climbed up and down it 14 times to look behind books and pictures. She found nothing but a lot of dust, which made her sad, because her mom used to want the house to be spice and spawn. She remembered how the house used to smell like lemons from the spray her mom used when she dusted. Now it smelled like dust. When she was exhausted, all the living room's hiding spots. Samantha looked at the big one grandfather clock in the back hall. She had to get ready for school soon, and she had to wake up her mom. Before dragging the step ladder back to the kitchen, she peeked her head into the office. The only potential hiding place was her dad's empty desk. She hurried into and opened all the drawers and looked in the cubby hole that once hung out by her dad's knee when she was really small. Nothing. There was nothing to see in the entire room, just a desk on an empty shelf. The other thing Samantha saw was she was from the room was a little funny little piece of carpet stuck under the foot edge of one of the shelves. Risking the search of the kitchen now before waking up her mom, Samantha opened one cabinet and drawer after another, feeling behind dishes, pots, pans, plastic containers, baskets, and utensils. Granted, remained hidden. Samantha felt Susie's present as soon as she got into the minivan after school that day. How did Susie do it? Samantha was sure Susie hadn't been around that morning, and she knew Susie was never in school. Samantha ignored her sister's instant present and stared at the back of her mom's messy hair. Did her mom knew Susie was here? Samantha wondered if she could ask, maybe not while her mom was driving. When her mom pulled into the driveway, Samantha turned to stare at Oliver, almost as if someone was making her do it. Usually she ignored Oliver. Was Susie making her look? How? Oliver only had a few leaves left. Maybe she'd come out and count them before dinner. No, she had to keep looking for Gretchen. Beans and Frank for dinner, her mom asked. Something that felt like a wave of flow between Samantha. The wave was dark and kind of oily. It wanted to cling on Samantha the way sadness had clung to her since Susie was gone. She thought a wave was emotion, but was it hers or Susie's? Susie loved Beans and Frank's. Was she sad that she couldn't have any? Did, any, did they have any food where she'd gone where she died? Beans and Franks are okay, Samantha said. Can we have a pineapple too? In her mind, she saw Susie screw up her face in disgust. Did Susie put that image there? Samantha had always liked pineapple with beans. And Susie thought that they were gross. Their mom gave Susie a half smile. Sure. Susie followed Samantha as she hurried from one room to the next for Granchet. Samantha had her searching for Granchet ever since they got home. Susie's drawings had worked. Unfortunately, Samantha hadn't, wasn't having any luck. This was partly because she was looking for the dumb places. For instance, Samantha had tried to find Gratchet in the oil, the hole of Oliver's tree trunk, shining her light into the hole and muttering about elves. Samantha had held her breath and snuck her hand deep down inside the tree. Susie was laughing the whole time. Samantha had believed her she was talking about elves. Now they were inside going... All through the house, the sound of rattling water and clicking pans and silverware made it clear their mom was still in the kitchen. Obviously, Samantha was trying to search upstairs before their mom finished fixing dinner. She started her mom's studio. I would have never had hidden Granchet in there, Susie told Samantha when she opened the studio door. Samantha paid no attention to Susie. This wasn't a surprise. Samantha was being some stubborn. Why couldn't Susie remember where she put the doll? She knew she put in the first time she hid it. It had been in her room, under her bed, but she knew she was very unoriginal hiding place. A couple hours later, she moved it, but to where? Susie stood in the doorway of her mom's studio while Samantha scurried around, digging in piles of fabric stack of pale yellow shells and mounts of yarn heaped in huge whisker baskets under the row of windows and the cabinet spins of wool sitting next to their modern loom. Susie thought that all the very brave because one of the standing house rules was that the studio was off limits. Samantha could even open the door with the storage room at the far end of the studio. When she went into the search, Susie didn't follow. 
Susie loved to play and be silly, but she wasn't crazy. The storage room held their mom's finished work, the stuff she sold to make money. They were never allowed to touch it. Once, when Susie was five, their mom had left one of her tape stairs on the dining ta room table because someone was coming to pick it up. Curious, Susie went to the dining room, climbed on the chair, and looked at the Tazberry. It was covered with fluffy tufts and of soft, round fabric to delight her. She had to touch them. Forgetting she just eaten chocolate chip cookies, Susie put her sticky fingers all over the light peach-colored months. When she saw the chocolate smudge, she tried to wipe them off, which spread them around even more. This made her cry, and it scared her enough to try and run from the room. In her hurry, she ended up knocking over a chair and falling. Trying to catch herself, she grabbed a tasteberry, and when she shifted her head on the table, which made her shriek. When her mother ran to the room, Susie was on the floor with a chocolate smeared taste beer on the one hand, bleeding onto another part of the taste beer from a gash on her forehead. Her mom had been so angry, it had scared Susie. It scared her so much, she never went anywhere near her mother's work again. Gretchen was not in her mother's studio, but Susie could only wait for Samantha to figure out on her own. Once she did, Samantha moved to her mom's bedroom. First, she paused in the hallway to listen. More sounds in the kitchen encouraged Samantha to enter. Gretchen's not in there, Susie said as Samantha got down and peeked under her mom's bed. The dark blue skirt dropped over Samantha's head like a scarf. Samantha popped off the floor, tilted her head and listened for a second, then went to her mother's closet. Samantha began sweeping aside hanging clothes, opening sh shoe boxes. Don't you think she would have found it by now if it was here? Susie said. Samantha didn't answer. Samantha looked up the shelves above the hanging. You would just crawl up the rack, Samantha mother. Susie smiled. Yes, I would. Samantha turned into a circle, frowning, spotting the bench that sat at the end of their mom's bed. Samantha dragged it to the closet. Susie felt bad just standing there watching, but Samantha wasn't Samantha was wasting her time. Samantha stood at the bench, even on tiptoe. She had strained to see the top shelves of her mother's closet. Finishing with the closet, she moved to her mother's dresser. Susie chewed on her thumb. She was sure Samantha was gonna get yelled at for, for what she's doing. Samantha had known that too, but she wasn't letting that stop her. Samantha searched through all her mother's underwear, stockings, socks, scarves. Samantha, what? Samantha squealed, slamming shut the last door. Dinner in five. Okay. Samantha ran into her mother's nightstand and searched it, then did the same thing in her father's. His was empty. Her mom's was stuffed full of books, fabric samples, and pills. Granted, was not hiding among them. I told you so, Susie said as she followed Samantha. From her mom's room, she knew she was being a snarky baby, but she couldn't help it. She'd almost hear a ticking countdown in her head. Samantha's been snooping around my things, Patricia told Jenny over the phone. Discovering her materials had been ruffled through, Patricia had decided to call her friend instead of yelling at her daughter. What thing? From what I could tell, all my things, Patricia said. She pressed three fingers on her template. Samantha knows better than that. Exactly, so you must have good reason, Jenny said. What reason could she possibly have? I don't know, but I know she had one. Nothing's missing or damaged. Not that I can tell. Then let it go. But seriously, Patricia, it's time to let it all go. Chica came at midnight. As usual, Susie felt pulled from Samantha's bed. As usual, she felt compelled to wander around the house and watch Chica's dark shaped circle outside. As usual, she opened the back door and closed it and went to the front. As usual, she wondered why she had to do what she had to do. Why did she have to leave her family? Susie opened the front door, and the night breeze blew a couple of Oliver's trees past Chica's feet and into the house. The night was brighter than the previous couple of nights because the moon was fuller. The clouds were gone, too. The stars were so thick in the sky they reminded Susie of the powdered sugar her mom used to put in her chocolate string of cookies she made at Christmas time. In some places, the star blurred in the expanse of brilliance white light. Susie expected Chica to take her hand as usual. Instead, Chica lifted a hand and pushed Susie aside. Then Chica walked into the house. The nightmare woke up Samantha. Her eyes flew open. She chucked her blankets and listened to her heart pound. It was just a dream, she told herself. She felt her heart start to slow down, and it was speeding up again. And Samantha sat up. It wasn't just a dream, Chica, she whispered. Her dream was just told her more about the chick and Susie's drawing. The chick was Chica. Chica had been chasing Samantha in her dreams. Samantha had been trying to move a shelf in her dad's office, and Chica's been stalking her. Samantha gasped. Her dad's office. That's where Samantha froze from when she heard sounds. Dump. Tap. Dump. Tap. Samantha started to shake. 
Those were the sounds. Those were the sound, the same sounds Samantha has been so many times over the past few months. The sounds she tried to convince herself she imagined. She hadn't imagined them. Those were the sounds. Except they weren't except the same. They were closer. Much closer. Samantha had always thought the sounds she heard came from outside the house. Now she knew they were inside and coming closer. When Chica started up the stairs, Susie tried to follow her, but she couldn't. It was like she was glued on the doorway. Trapped by there by invisible chains. Chica, stop! She yelled. Chica didn't stop. She climbed slowly but steadily up the stairs. She was going for Samantha. Susie was sure of it. Susie struggled to free herself from whatever held her in place. She tried and tried to move around. Then she started to cry. And she did the only thing she could do to help her sister. Samantha! She shouted. Run! Samantha vaulted out of her bed and ran to the bedroom door. Could she get in her mom's room before whatever was coming up the stairs got to the top? Opening her door a creak, she looked towards the stairs. No, it was too late. A bright yellow man-sized chick with a sharp, horrible sharp teeth was on one step from the top, just a few feet from Samantha's door. She slammed her door and looked around the room. As the footsteps come closer, she dove under the bed. When the door started opening, Samantha went rigid and held her breath as orange metal feet crossed the wooden floor. This couldn't be real, but it was. Trembling, Samantha washed her feet. The feet circled her bed. She couldn't hold her breath any longer, so she carefully let in a little air. The feet stopped. They turned. They began coming back to the bed, and then they paused. Samantha heard a terrifying whirling sound, and suddenly, the bed sprang hanging over the side of the bed shed. The yellow face with pinkish eyes and dirty teeth pierced at Samantha. Samantha wrenched away from the face, squirming towards the opposite side of the bed. Once out under the bed, she looked over to her shoulder, wondering if she could get past to flee her room before the chick straightened. No, it was already standing, staring. Samantha ran to the window. She tried to listen to the thump, tap, dump, tap as she fumbled with the window lock. Tumor, tumors like butterfly wings flustered towards her shoulder blades. She ignored them. The steps muffled as they crossed her rug. She only had seconds. Crawling through the window, Samantha gripped into interlocked diamonds and trinklings and swung her legs open. The sound of rippling fabric made her look back through the window. The chick was right there. It held a piece of her pale blue nightgown in hand. Samantha whimpered and scrambled around the trinkless, keeping her gaze on the vine that clung the trinkless. She went as fast as she could. She was in her stocking feet, so the wood felt sharp against her swole but didn't care. She also didn't look up. She didn't want to know if she was being chased. When her feet encountered a rough, solid surface, she knew she reached the roof, the porch roof. Then she did look up. Nothing was coming down the trails after her. Good, but not that good. If she wasn't fast enough, Chica could have gone back to the house and get her when she was reached the porch. Chica. Samantha's mind had finally forced her to see what she hadn't seen before. The chick in the house was Chica. In her drawing, Susie had been trying to say that Chica didn't want Susie to have Gretchen. Why? S Samantha didn't know, but she knew she was right. Samantha was coming after her because she was looking for Gretchen. Samantha grit her teeth as she leaned over the edge in the porch roof to grab one of the porch posts. Because she gripped it well enough to drop her legs down the railing. She had to for Susie. Samantha was going to get down and back inside the house. Then she was going to find Gretchen. But thanks to her dream, she knew where to look. But could she get there before Chica? Susie didn't know how much time she was caught in the doorway listening to the sounds of, door of Chica's footsteps upstairs. She, over she heard several over other thumps too, but she never heard Samantha scream. She hoped that there was a good sign, but she wasn't sure. She thought she would be at the doorway forever. Time went on and on and on. Then she saw Chica at the top of stairs. She was coming back down and she didn't have Samantha. If she could have moved, Sam Susie would have fallen to the ground in relief. Instead, all she could do was watch Chica come down the stairs. Then suddenly, Samantha appeared from outside, her face white and her eyes wide. Her hair in a tangle, Samantha rushed past Susie. Susie's, Samantha's head was down, and her gaze was on her feet. She didn't look at Chica. She didn't even want to look at the stairs at Chica. Susie watched Samantha dart into the dining room and disappear towards the kitchen. What was Samantha going? Samantha didn't know why she didn't think of it before. Maybe it was because, even though she kept thinking about him, she really wanted to forget her dad. It was bad enough that Susie got taken from them. At least Susie didn't leave on purpose. Susie didn't want to leave. She was taken, and she was murdered. That, Samantha thought, is the pretty good excuse for leaving the family. Her dad, though, didn't have to leave. He left because it was too hard. That's what he said. It's too hard. 
but that's why we needed you, Daddy, she said to him. He just pressed his lips together, something she'd gotten from him, and said he had to go. That's why Samantha was on her own now. Her dad was gone. Her mom was drugged to sleep. Her sister was dead. If Samantha was going to survive, she had to save herself. Even though Samantha didn't look up the stairs, she knew Chica was there. That's why she ran toward the kitchen. She didn't know how smart Chica was, but she figured it was worth trying to fool her. She wanted Chica to follow into her in the kitchen and look for her there. If she judged right, it would give her enough time. When she reached the kitchen, Samantha turned on the lights. Then she tore through the back entrance in the kitchen and ran down the connected hall to her dad's office. In his office, she left the lights out. She knew where she was going. She ran to the shelf in the carpet piece. She grabbed the edge of the shelf with the chest height. Then she tugged on it. It didn't move. She bent over and tugged on the one below. No movement. The one above stuck, stretching. She reached for the one above that. Still nothing. It has to be. In her frustration, she kicked the staff right next to the little carpet piece. And the shelving unit popped free of the wall, opening out the door. Susie had been right. A hidden room where it had been all along. Samantha didn't wait for the shelf door to open all the way. She shouldered through the opening and groped for the light switch. She found out just inside the opening. Flipping the switch, she held and still and listened. She could hear his cheek of footsteps in the kitchen. Good, it worked. She looked around the room was filled with all sorts of bizarre things. Dry leaves, rocks, broken glass, old toys, stacks of papers and books. Samantha didn't know if she had was looking for Susie's stash or treasure or her dad's. Didn't matter. It only mattered for Gretchen. Her curly hair thick with the dust in her polka dot dress was bright as it was the day she disappeared. Was sitting on top of one of the leaning books towards. Samantha grabbed the doll and darted back through her dad's office. When she reached the doorway, she looked to the right. Chica was coming down the hall. She was only a few feet away. Samantha fleed through the living room and out through the front door. Panting, she looked at the yard. It was empty, of course. She knew Susie was. And she knew where she was. Chica was. Only Oliver stood in the yard. Oliver in his late, pale, yellow leaf. Samantha ran to him and hid behind his long, huge, solid truck. Susie watched Samantha behind Gr Oliver. Then she turned and waited for Chica to reach the entryway. What would Chica do? How could Susie keep Chica away from Samantha? Turned out she didn't have to. When Chica reached S Susie, she paused. Chica let, out, Ch Chica let out a hand. Susie's hand raised and reached for Chica's even more. That was the last thing she wanted to do. She felt an animatronic t metal touch her fingertips. But I'm not ready, Susie told Chica. Chica looked down, her teeth gleaming in the moonlight. Susie shed back. Chica's fingers grasped Susie's tightly, and Susie couldn't pull them away. When Chica turned, she, Susie felt herself being dragged to her home, from her home. She knew she had to stop resisting. She had to go along. So she stopped struggling. She began calmly walking next to Chica. Samantha watched Chica take her sister's hand, and she watched her sister and trust Chica across the porch, coming down the steps and walk towards Oliver. Samantha tense. What would she do? What could she do? But before she could, but before she could decide, Chica and Susie disappeared. Not thinking, Samantha screamed, Wait! Susie heard her sister scream. Susie didn't paw, but Susie did. However much Chica was willing to let her keep walking, something equally strong was willing to take her back. Caught in the middle, Susie once again couldn't move. Susie! Samantha wailed for her sister's name. I have to go back, Susie said. I have to. She waited, holding her breath, and she felt something stiff in the air around her. Chica let go of her hand. Samantha stepped out from Oliver behind and stood next to him. Gretchen dangling from her right hand. Tears felt she was too late. No, what was that? The leaves next near the leaves near Oliver's trunk swirled up in the ground and then out away from Oliver. The night was breezy, but the night wind wasn't going in circles. It was also blowing towards Oliver, not away from him. Samantha looked up at his swole surviving leaf again. Then that's when Susie suddenly appeared in front of Oliver. She looked the same she looked that day she was abducted. She even wore the same clothes, her magenta and pink striped sweater, and the jeans Jeannie had studied with Rainstrom. Samantha stared at her sister, then she held up Gretchen. Susie opened her mouth like she wanted to say something, but then she looked, took the punga doll and clutched in her chest. I missed you so much, Samantha said. Susie nodded. She reached out and Samantha didn't even hesitate. She stepped into the offering hug. Susie felt like the solid as she felt like she was alive. Maybe even more so, Samantha has never was a hugger. She usually only half hugs Susie when Susie insists on a hug. Now she hugs Susie with all her strength. I love you, she whispered. She felt a wave of emotion flow over her, like the one she felt in the car, but this wasn't dark and oily. This was light, and it was warm and fuzzy. 
Samantha was pretty sure this was the wave. This wave of love. Susie let go. Samantha brushed as her tears that ran down her cheeks. Susie smiled and turned away to Chica. Samantha watched Chica take her sister's hand. Then she watched Chica let Susie and Gretchen away. They disappeared just as Oliver dropped his last leaf. Goodbye, Samantha whispered. Samantha felt the letting go, and she felt the promise of something new. Susie was leaving, yes, but this wasn't the end. Samantha knew it was just the beginning, just like the happy ghost in the story. Susie was going where she could be with her family forever. Mm -hmm.